Hi, everyone. This is Felicia Brown with One Concept Radio, where I'm getting to know experts and educators from the massage, chiropractic, acupuncture, and spa professions. Today, I'm here with Dr. Andreo Spina. Dr. Andreo Spina holds a Bachelor of Kinesiology degree from McMaster University and is a Doctor of Chiropractic with a Fellowship in Sports Sciences. He is also the creator of Functional Anatomy Seminars. Welcome back, Andreo. Thank you for having me once again, Felicia. Always a pleasure. Well, it's our pleasure to have you today and also to have you as a part of the One Concept Conferences. Um, As you may have heard in some of the other interviews I've done, one of the big questions I've been asking people, uh, our presenters and the experts who are involved in these conferences, is how they define wellness. So I'd love to just get your take on that and see how you define wellness, Andreo. Um, Well, really, I look at wellness not as a a something, uh, but rather as a process. So I I almost like to think of it as a verb, uh, and maybe I can... throw this back at you, instead of defining wealth, wellness, uh, perhaps we can define living well. Uh, I, I personally think that living well, the idea behind living well is is the same as optimizing life, so making a person's life as enjoyable and as fulfilling as possible. Um, and I often think about the law of entropy, which really means that you know everything is, is degenerating at, at some rate or another. So in order to live well and optimize life, it's a matter of training both the body and the mind um, to decrease the rate of, of entropy um, and to really get the most out of the time that one has. A, a lot of people talk about homeostasis um, being a goal. I personally believe that homeostasis is kind of a, a misnomer because the body is never really at a state of homeostasis. And if it is, it's only there for a fleeting moment and then it starts to break down. So really, in my mind, it's all about training the body to, to maintain or to improve its, uh, its functional capacities, and then also training the mind in order to um, also prevent degeneration and, and to optimize the mind's function. So that's kind of how I look at the whole topic of wellness. Well, that's a great answer, and I'll tell you the word that stood out to me. I mean, we've talked before, and and so I've heard some of these terms before, but the word that stood out to me was functional. And I can't help but notice that um, you have a a program called Functional Anatomy Seminars. So I'm wondering if you could help us understand what functional anatomy is and talk a little bit about your classes. Yeah, sure. I mean, once again, I think the the idea of my seminars, Functional Anatomy Seminars, is, is really human optimization is kind of the the main goal of the seminar. So I have um, um, three real main seminar or components. I have functional anatomic palpation system, which deals with um, teaching practitioners very specific palpatory skills, so defining lesions, locating tissues, and deciding what to do once these lesions are located. So that's kind of the FAP system really deals with the assessment component. Then I have a functional range release technique, um, which is my approach to both the treatment of musculoskeletal dysfunction as well as rehabilitation of musculoskeletal dysfunction. So between those two, I cover kind of assessment, treatment, and rehabilitation. And then the third installment, which is functional range conditioning, is a mobility conditioning and joint optimization system where I look to um, further the rehabilitative process and kind of bridge the gap between rehabilitation and and training in order to optimize human performance. So I teach people how to improve articular mobility, improve movement potential, um, etc. So with all of the systems, I'm really looking to to cover all the bases from treatment, or sorry, from um, assessment to treatment, treatment to rehab, and then rehab into training. I forgot if that did that answer your question. I think you also <laughs> asked about um, about the word uh, functional. Um, I, I use functional in all of the systems, um, and uh, really, I believe that functional is defined by a person and by their goals. So when somebody says, you know, is this exercise functional, I always say, well, what's the end goal of that person who's doing the exercise? And that's the only way I can I can really answer the question or define what functional is. It has to be attached to a particular goal set out by a um, by a, a person. 
So then function, in a sense, is kind of a subjective term. I mean, what I might be trying to accomplish with my therapy and rehab it could be completely different than someone else as far as what their end goal is. Absolutely. And you know what? I, I deal with various athletes. And, for example, people always ask, you know, is this a functional exercise or what's the best functional exercise for this or that? And I don't believe any exercise is functional or not functional. It, it all depends on the goal. I mean, if you're a rock climber and you're at the top of a mountain and in order to get to the top you have to, you know, abduct your thigh and then extend it this degrees and have your ankle in a really awkward position and you have to be able to generate an ability to push up off of that position, well, then that movement becomes functional. So really every movement is functional depending on whether or not you need to use it at any particular moment. So that's kind of my overall view of functional. You have to assign a goal, and then from the goal you can determine what, you know, what particular movement, exercise, or whatever we're discussing is functional. I guess then, too, you probably have some movements that are dysfunctional or some that are just completely impossible. Um, yeah, you know what? I, I, I hate to say that some movements are impossible. I, I always get my patients or my, my athletes to, to work towards really opening up any movement that, that 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 can be done by the human body. So I hate to set a limit on what is, is possible because there's a lot of amazing people doing a lot of things that could be defined as impossible. You know, I, I treat and, and, and um, consult with some Cirque du Soleil performers, for example, and what they do in other people's eyes would be defined as impossible, but obviously the human is able to do that. So I hate to put a limiting... Um, a limiting definition of what's possible. Well, I guess then there really isn't. If I've seen a lot of those performances, and it might be mind-boggling to watch what they do, but they can stretch themselves beyond uh, perhaps what the norm is, but it's certainly possible to attain on some level anyway. Absolutely, absolutely. So outside of working with Cirque du Soleil performers, um, I know you're going to be teaching some classes on the upcoming conference in Canada. Uh, I'm curious if you might share a little bit about what people taking those classes might expect to take away. Well, I'm doing uh, two different classes. Uh, one is a, the three-hour workshop, um, and that's uh, looking at uh, connective tissue continuity and how that affects our approach. In that particular um, little kind of mini-seminar, I'd like to share my ideas um, of how I, I took the literature regarding connective tissue, how our body is, is ultimately interconnected, how all soft tissues represent the same tissue along a continuum. Um, and, and I'd like to just kind of point out how the new literature describing this tissue continuity can change our approach um, in a way that optimizes it. So I'm one that likes to not only read literature and consume it, but I like to turn it over into actual practical applications. So my three-hour workshop is really going to be looking at the newest ideas concerning connective tissue continuity. And based on these new ideas, how should we be altering our approaches of assessment, our approaches of treatment, in order to, to optimize our effects? And then once I, I kind of go over that theoretical uh, construct, I'm going to just go ahead and demonstrate some of my assessment and treatment techniques, um, really focusing on how I utilize the literature um, regarding connective tissue continuity to mold my approach to um, soft tissue assessment and treatment. In the one-hour lecture that I'm giving on the importance of tissue specificity and manual care, I'm going to really discuss why I feel palpation is the is the cornerstone of all manual medical practice and why being ultimately specific with our palpation and assessment techniques will translate into specific results. And those results would be more effective, more efficient if we can increase our level of specificity. So those are kind of the the things that I'm going to cover in in, in those two um, those two presentations. Well, I know those are going to be information-packed and incredibly helpful for the people in attendance, but one thing I, I do like to find out is, um, you know, how, if there's anything while we're listening or while we're talking to people listening, is there, let me start over. 
<laughs> yeah, no problem. I got, you know, I got my words all twisted around, which doesn't happen to me much. What I would like to know is something that you might want to share with people listening about how they could right now improve the results they get with their clients and in turn um, improve their own level of professional success. You just mentioned palpation and assessment being really a part of increasing better results. But any other thoughts on that? Yeah, I think that that would be the number one goal when I'm asked that question that I that I give to people. I, I say to try to enhance your ability to be specific with, you know, first of all, what structure you're actually treating, but not only the structure, but in trying to define what's the actual pathological process occurring in the the aberrant tissue or in the pathological tissue, what what is the histology that's occurring? And when you can break down a, a particular problem to that specificity, it makes it a lot easier to select treatment tools that can be used to um, battle those individual or those very specific um, problems that are occurring. So the more you can break down a condition into its you know, cellular, subcellular processes, the, the better you're able to select the more appropriate treatment approaches to, to deal with that condition. Um, I believe your second question was really um, you were asking how can one improve practice success? Is that what you were? Absolutely. I'm sorry, say again? Yes, definitely. How can you improve your practice success? Well, I mean, from my experience, um, obviously you try a lot of things to increase your success in practice. I always like to tie my success in practice to my ability to make people better as opposed to, you know, looking at how to market or looking at how to uh, get more patients. I, I tend to just want to do better with the patients that I have, and then I feel that, that that kind of makes your practice grow. But what I've done is I've I've taken a kind of a more broad approach to all of my patients. When they come in with a particular problem, I assess and I treat their problem, and in the process, I, I try to teach them as much as I can about optimization, about you know, how can you make your everyday life better? How can you make it less stressful on your joints? Um, how can you increase the quality of your life by by exercise, by nutrition, by meditation, etc.? And I think that the more you bring people out of that pain focus and put them into a, a like a living optimization focus, the more you can help that person because then you can start expanding your approaches not only into soft tissue treatments, but also into explaining the importance of, um, of um, good food and good nutrition and explaining the importance of, of exercise and what exercises you can use to improve your longevity of life, to improve your ability to move, your ability to do, to accomplish goals, etc. And so I think that when you take a, a more broad-based approach, you, you create a relationship with the patient such that you're, you're more of a... Um, of an overseer of their general health as opposed to just an overseer of a treatment or, a, pardon me, an overseer of a person who's just looking at a particular pain diagnosis and, and treating that particular diagnosis. I think that sounds like a great approach, and when you combine it with understanding what someone's goals are and helping to meet them where they are to get where they want to be and providing them with a multitude of solutions, you become... Uh, an ally and a resource for them and not just a treatment provider. So I think yeah, I exactly. I, I think that that's really missing in healthcare. I think, uh, you know, everyone always says that thing, you know, we don't have health care, we don't have health care, we have sick care. And I would hate for manual medical practitioners to fall into that into that realm simply because we have such an opportunity. We spend more time with our patients we have more of an opportunity to affect their lives at a, at a much deeper and more profound level um, than, than do other medical practitioners who only have five minutes to give. Um, so I think that the more you approach a patient in terms of making them better at life um, in general with the knowledge that you've acquired, I think that's, that's just a, a, an amazing way to, to look at practice and an amazing way to, to influence and to... Uh, better um, people to come through your door. Well said. Help your clients and patients get better at life. 
so appreciate you taking the time to share that with us, Andreo. Uh, before we wrap up, would you please share your best contact information or website with everyone? Yeah, I mean, I, I have, I, I, from my first answer, there's, there's quite a bit of complexity to my seminars, but you can learn more about them at functionalanatomyseminars.com. Um, and uh, we take any questions you might have at info at functionalanatomyseminars.com. Um, for the social media people out there, um, you can follow my Twitter feed uh, at Dr. Andreo Spina. Fantastic. Thanks so, so much for being here today. Always a pleasure to talk to you. I hope to see you at the conference. Absolutely. I can't wait. And for everyone listening, if you'd like to learn more from Dr. Andreo Spina, please join us for the One Concept Canadian Massage and Chiropractic Conference in Niagara Falls, Ontario, October 18th through 20th. Just go to www.oneconcept.com, that's the word one, O-N-E, concept.com, for more information and to register. Thanks so much for tuning in, and have a fabulous day.